Welcome everyone. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I just it's that time of, of life, I think, uh, when your eyes start to change. If mine are starting to change, y'all are blurry, you know. I'm going to pull my glasses off, you're still blurry. <laughs> so I think it's time to get up. Go to the doctor again. My eyes checked. Anyway, let's pray the spirit of prayer. Father, we want to thank you for allowing us to gather here. I pray that you would fill us each with your Holy Spirit as we talk about your word. And I pray that you would uh, it would be you that we hear. And I pray that you would give us a special blessing today. That we would uh, not allow this just to inform us, but we would allow it to transform us. In Jesus' name we pray. I don't like that uh, scripture verse, but it is in scripture, and uh, we can't pick and choose uh, scripture verses. I'd like to go to uh, Mount Mark chapter 2, verse 17, and start there. <coughs> When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of physician, but those who are sick, I did not come to call the righteous, but sent sinners to repentance. So when Jesus came, he went to the, uh, what we would perceive as the good people of the day, back in his day. I mean, if we were living back then, we would see them as the good people. And that was the Pharisees and the scribes and all the religious people. Uh, now, he went to the, uh, where did Jesus go? He went to the, uh, the sinners, the, the harlots, the, uh, uh, you, you name it. That's where he, he went to uh, preach to them. I mean, he came to, to preach to the whole world, but he ended up going to, uh, to the sinners. Uh, in this verse, we see that that we need a, a physician if we're sick. Now, being sinners, uh, is that, does that mean that we... Uh, that if, if I was a doctor and you came to me and you had uh, a real serious illness and I gave you a, 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 a little bit of medication and said, you're fine, go on, go home, go home you'll be all right. And uh, you really had something real serious. You would be upset when you found out how really ill you were. The uh, what I want you to understand is what I'm telling you is uh, is uh, you want me to tell you the truth or a lie. This is what I'm trying to, trying to tell you. Whether it hurts you, or you want me to make you feel good? Or you want me to tell you what's in the Bible? <laughs> I don't want you to feel good right into uh, eternal damnation. Uh, that's the trouble with a lot of churches today, is they want to uh, tickle your fancy, so you, you, we might say. They uh, want you to feel good. I mean, we see it all the time on television. There's a stadium full of people... And I'm not judging anybody, but they're they're listening, and 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 I, I enjoy listening to the people because they make you feel good. Emotionally, you feel good, but at, at, does that help you learn? Um, say, why do we need uh, uh, why do we need a gospel anyway? Because we're sinners. And we need to be told that we're sinners. In uh, John 3.16, actually I want to go to uh, Romans chapter 3 verse 10.
as it is written. And th this is foreign to human beings, especially those that are, have no interest in Bible topics or biblical things. This, this is uh, foreign to, and it was foreign to me, and I was a church person most of my life. And uh, I shouldn't say most of my life, but a big part of my life I was a church person. And before I read this verse, let's go to Jeremiah 17, 9. I want to, I want to try, try and set the stage here for what I want to talk about. Jeremiah 17, 9. And, and this particular verse is talking about human beings. That's uh, you and me. And it says, and I don't like this because I, I'm, a, I'm a prideful human being. And that, that's not the way the Father has called us to be. But it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That is certainly us without God. And when we meet the nicest person on the street, I had a man get mad at me about this verse. And I, I, I read it right out of the scripture. He says, I'm not like that. <laughs> and, I, and I said, okay. I said, that's fine. He says, I'm a nice guy. I don't do anything wrong. I pay my taxes. I take care of my bills. I pay my bills. But is that what this verse is talking about? No. Uh, if, we're being, if we're a good person or not. Okay, let's go to uh, back to where I, I said a few minutes ago. Uh, Romans chapter 3, verses 10 to 11. There is not, none righteous, no, not one. Does that agree with Jeremiah 17, 9? There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They are all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. That, that's one of those things that's hard to talk about. I mean, the, fish, the physician won't, should tell you, you've got cancer and you're going to die. <laughs> that's basically what, what this is. We have a, a sickness and it's called sin. Let's go to uh, Romans 14, verse 23. And that's uh, from, uh, you know, when we're, can we pick um, who our parents are going to be? Can we pick when we're going to be born? And I, I just want you to hang this on a hook in your mind because I'm going to bring it back up. I don't know where I'm going to fit it yet, but I just want you to start thinking about it. We are at the mercy of God in everything. Our, our birthplace, where we were born in, in the world, when we were born, who we were born to, you can't, you, you can't pick any of these things. Let's go to uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 23. But he who doubts is condemned if he, if he eats because he has, does this because he does not eat from faith, for whatever is not from faith is sin. You should hang that on a hook in your mind also. Let's go to uh, you know, I found out I was doing the sermon on Wednesdays. <laughs> Please be patient with me. Let's go to uh, Psalm 127, verse 1. This is one of my, one of my most favorite uh, psalms, and I quote this to myself constantly because I am always I'm looking for, a, for good verses, and this is one of the best verses in Scripture. It says... Uh, 27 verse 1 it says unless the Lord builds the house the laborers labor in vain 
who built it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays away in vain. Now, when we do things on our own, it says, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. Don't you remember that? Let's go to our, uh, it's in our bulletin. And it's Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. And I want to start at, I'm, I'm going to start at the uh, second part of verse 12. It says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And this verse, if the, if the Lord doesn't build a house, the labors labor in vain. Yeah, if I read this uh, verse 12 without uh, verse 13, then I have a problem. It says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If I stop there, I have a problem because I don't be trying to work out all, everything that, in my life myself. But if we go to the next verse, it tells you who does the works. It says, for it, it is God who works in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. So I ask you, who does the works? God does the works. Now, if we look at that, if the Lord doesn't build a house, the laborers labor in vain. That verse fits there with, with that. Now, if we uh, look at our, our, our uh, verse today that Gary read to us, and that says, what does it say? It says, Lord, Lord, didn't we do all these miracles in your name? If what we read in Romans chapter 14 and um, verse 23, if it is not of faith, then it is a sin. So if we look at John 14.10 the name of the, the title of the sermon today is what? And it says the Father does the works. What I want you to learn from this sermon is who does the works in your life? If we do the works in our own power and, we, and these works are not by faith, what is it? It's sin. Now if we look at John 14, 10. Let's go to, uh, before we do that, let's go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. I'll tell you what verse I'm going to get to. Verse 19. It says, Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son of Man can do what to him of Himself? Nothing. Nothing of Himself. So this uh, verse in uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 says, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. When we awake in the morning, we need to remember what Jesus is saying. Also, he says, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. So I present to you that my fear and trembling should be if I'm doing the works. That's your what I, that should what I should be afraid of. If, if, if the works are mine, I should be trembling. Because if they're mine, then what are they? They're sin. They're not of faith. 
Y'all get that? Yeah. Let's go to uh, verse 30 of the same chapter. It says, I, and this is Jesus talking. I have a red letter edition. I'm sure you do too. Most of us do. It says, I uh, can of myself do nothing. This is Jesus talking. He says, I, as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. That is, that, before I became an Adventist, and many, many years after I became an Adventist, I didn't understand this, that even in Jesus' life, if Jesus had used his divinity even once, the whole time he was here, he could not have qualified to be my substitute or my savior. Do you understand that? He had to live a complete life of a human being. Now, if we go to John 14.10, this really tells who does the works. Let's go to John 14.10. And this is one of the... Uh, this, this one made my hair stand on in the first time. <laughs> I mean, it, it, that, this verse is that good. John 14, 10, it says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. <laughs> this very verse, I mean, we, we read two other verses that Jesus says, I do nothing. Now we're seeing where the works come from. Come from the Father. When Jesus walked on the water, whose power did He use? Didn't Jesus tell us that we would do greater things than these? He told, he told His disciples that. You will do greater things than these. When He healed the sick, whose power did He use? God's power. Jesus says, now in 1 John chapter 6, Verse, I'm sorry, First John don't have six. That's what he should call me on that. First John chapter two and verse six it says, "He who says he abides in Him, as Jesus, ought himself also to walk just as He walked." So if Jesus used the divinity, this verse would not fit in Scripture because Jesus is asking us to walk just as He walked. It's also, uh, Revelation 3.21 says that uh, we should be like Jesus also. Now, if we look at how Jesus walked, how should we walk? It tells us. It's kind of, it's kind of, kind of tells us uh, how we should walk like Jesus walked. Now, if we go back to the Old Testament, we can uh, prove some of this. Because in uh, Exodus chapter 19, Inner 
inner, inner, energy, energy. That's what that word is. <laughs> Maybe that's not what it sounds like in the south. <laughs> anyway, inner Deo. It says, for God who works, it said, for God who supplies the energy, he wants us to supply the energy for God who energizes you in both to will and to do his good pleasure. So we get the energy. We give the energy. God, we allow God to come into us. Uh, so, you know, the basic point of this sermon is who is doing the works? Let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 19. And if y'all have been around me, y'all heard me preach about this so much. I, I kind of got it memorized in my brain. Exodus chapter 19. Let's start with uh, verse 1. I need to start with verse 5. But I'm going to throw a curveball this time. In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. For they had departed from Rephidim, had come to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain. And Moses went up to God and called to the Lord. Called, the Lord called him from the mountain, saying, Thus you say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. Now God had taken Israel out of Egypt. And if you know the story of Israel, I'm, I don't have time to tell the whole story, but you know all the circumstances of Israel coming out of Egypt. It, it was, it was, they had a hard time. And God led them to the Red Sea, and, and the, the emphasis here, I want to say, is God led them. God did all this for them. He brought them to the Red Sea. Then when their enemies came behind them, uh, He blocked them off with a, a pillar of fire. And then He opened the Red Sea and they went through the Red Sea. Well, their enemies followed them and He destroyed their enemies. And as I'm telling the story, I want you to think about yourself that... God is working in your life the same way. He's brought you, at, when you read the uh, preamble of the Ten Commandments, which is, uh, and God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The people like to leave this out of the Ten Commandments. It says, He brought you out of the house of bondage. And He's speaking to us today. He brought us out of the house of bondage. That is what He has done. Now, then he, once he got them through the Red Sea, they came to the uh, waters of, of Mira. I think that's how you pronounce that word, Mira. And, and the water was bitter. So what did he do? He made it sweet for them so they could drink it. Then he led them to, uh, through the desert without food, and he fed them manna. I mean, he took care of it. He wooed these people all the way to this Exodus chapter 19. Yeah, and, he, and he's calling them, and he's wooing them. And, 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 and God is doing everything. They couldn't have saved themselves from the Egyptians. They couldn't have brought themselves out of Egypt. They couldn't have fed themselves in the desert. They couldn't have uh, got the, the water. God did everything for them. What did they do for themselves? Not a, not, nothing. That's a, a zero with the edges rubbed out. There's nothing there. They, they could do nothing. And, and, and we have got to develop the mentality that we can do nothing. When we do something and it's not a faith, what is it? It's sin. And, and don't get me wrong about, I, I don't have all the answers, so please don't come ask. The only deserve is done. Oh, better not move. Oh, I can? You got the whole thing? Okay, I can move. You know, I, when David slew the giant. You know, David and Goliath. When David slew the giant, he had faith. 
I mean, God loved this man. And it says that David was a man after his own heart. He was full of faith. But when it comes to the Bathsheba incident, and I ask myself this question, I ask myself a lot of questions like this. From David's sin with Bathsheba till Nathan came and told him of his sin, uh, and he repented, was David lost? You have to answer the question for you say. I know what my answer is, and, and I, I, I did bring that up to, to look for your answers, but think about that. God loved David, and God loves you. I, that's what I want to say. God loves you as much as He loved David. David made mistakes. And He loves these Israelites for, for, for whatever reason. He loves these Israelites. And they were the lowest people on the face of the earth. But He's telling them now in verse 5, and this is probably one of the, one of the greatest verses in all of Scripture. It says, and, and I'm going to paraphrase it, I, I, I need to break it down. But I'm going to end close to here. I want to break it down just a little bit. Because it says, Now, therefore, if... Now, that word is really big. Yeah. If you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you, will, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all the people, for all the earth is mine. So God's telling these Israelites... That I'm going to make I, I'm going to make you a special treasure. But if we, they were in Philippians chapter two verse twelve, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. They never made it to verse thirteen where it says God works out works things out for His pleasure. Okay, now verse uh, five it says now therefore if you will indeed obey now that word obey we don't like that as Americans because it's like you're going to obey me or, or this is going to happen you, there's re, there's going to be results there's going to be uh, consequences if you don't obey me but what this word obey in scripture means is that it means hearken it means listen to me attentively and God this is a loving God we're talking about a being who sacrificed another being Jesus Christ on the cross for us. So this is love. I mean, we can't deny that Jesus doesn't love us. And it, it says, I'm getting away off that. It says, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant. Now that word keep, if you look in the uh, second chapter of Genesis, that word keep, is, is the same thing as Adam, he, he, God asked Adam to keep the garden. And that word is like, it's so cherish. I want you to cherish my covenant. I want you to appreciate my covenant. And then I will make you a special treasure. God is not asking us to do anything. He's asking us to appreciate what He's doing. We need to learn that lesson. That God is trying to teach us to appreciate what He's done for us. He's not asking us to do anything because He's going to do the doing in us and through us. Because that word faith, you know, that word faith, I have a perfect definition for faith. It says faith is depending upon the Word of God only and expecting that Word only to do what the Word says. We expect God, and, and, he, and He does it, and, and He's asking us to uh, trust Him. Now, the problem with the Israelites in, in chapter 19, verse 8, the people answered God all together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And that's the same thing in our scripture verse that Gary read in Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23 where they said we did all these miracles in your name 
The Israelites are now telling God that they're going to do what He wants to. What happened 40 days after the after the, the next chapter, the Ten Commandments? They were partying around the golden calf. Right after the Ten Commandments.